few films have had an impact on an entire genre as the Blair Witch Project. Love it or hate it, you can't deny that for years to come, thousands tried to emulate its formula for success, and few succeeded. And like a good little box office hit, it spawned a franchise, albeit a, a, a pretty limited one. So the film might have had an impact on the film world, but does it have continuity? Or should I make it go stand in the corner and think about what it's done? All right, the project commences back in 1999 with The Blair Witch Project, the movie that started a whole damn phenomenon. Found footage existed before this movie, but this is the reason why every horror film for about 10 years after involved a shaky cam. It begins with a card telling us that the footage is from October of 1994 and introduces us to Heather, Mike, and Josh, three independent filmmakers heading out to make a documentary about the Blair Witch in Burkittsville, Maryland. They hear about a local hermit named Rustin Parr who kidnapped kids in 1940, and they're also told about sightings of the witch before heading out into the woods. Tensions start to increase, and they find a clearing with several piles of rocks, numbering seven, the exact number of children that had been kidnapped. That night, they start hearing creepy noises outside and get lost, while Mike gets angrier and angrier, and something seems to be antagonizing them, including hanging these stick figures up in the trees. After being in the woods for several days, they're attacked one night by something that's apparently pretty disturbing, even though we don't, we don't get to see it. Uh, and soon, Josh is taken away, and man, I, I'm, I'm just not used to hearing my name said so many times in a row. Josh! Right here, guys, just like literally sitting right here. The next morning, a bundle of sticks shows up containing some teeth, so Heather makes her famous apology, possibly the most memed part of the movie. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. On the final night, they come across Parr's house, long thought burned down, as they try to find Josh, and Mike is attacked. Heather tries to find him, only to discover that he's standing in the corner, much like the stories told to them, before being struck down by an unseen force as the movie ends. So yeah, I, I think people really forget just how big the Blair Witch Project was. It brought in over $200 million at the box office against a shoestring budget, so of course a sequel was rushed into production. That happened in the strangest way possible with 2000's Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows, which starts by telling us that it's a reenactment instead of found footage reality. We're then told that it's summer of 1999, and the notion here is that the first film was just that, a film. And people are rushing to Burkittsville, and Michael Weston is here, and here's the opening credits. <laughs> Look, if the original Blair Witch was a preview of what the 2000s were going to be like for horror, then the sequel was kind of like a reminder of what the 1990s were. So there's a tour group headed out on a Blair Witch tour, and like the first film, all the actors are playing characters that have their actual names. They're all kind of basic level stereotypes, and hey, I, I have that camera. I had to go through a bunch of uh, old boxes in my closet to find this, so I hope it's I hope it's worth it. It's not really worth it. They all black out, and the next morning, all of their equipment is destroyed, and they try to figure out what's going on, finding marks on their bodies, and they all start to lose it a bit. Erica goes missing, and another tour group is found murdered at Coffin Rock in the same way as the story told in Part One. There's some files here that possibly show Stephen's birth year as 76, so he'd be 23 here, and the actor was born in 68 and was 31, so he's either playing a younger character or that's not supposed to be a birth date. They find Erica dead, and then there's footage of their blacked out time, smashing things, having an orgy, and going off to kill that other tour group. Their paranoia grows and they kill Tristan, and the rest are arrested. 
None of them remember killing anyone, so it appears as if the Blair Witch manipulated things to make them take the fall. Unless there's no supernatural and these people just went crazy. I guess this one's totally up to you. The second film was such a disaster, critically and with fans, but did make money. Although nothing happened theatrically until 2016's Blair Witch. It starts in a familiar way, letting us know some footage was found in 2014, and there's a video that James here thinks is Heather from the first film, who was his sister. We're back to found footage, and we're told that James was four years old when his sister disappeared, so he was born in 1990, and would be 24 here. We're told that the original trio just disappeared, and James is making a documentary to get closure. This one was actually directed by Adam Wingard with a script by Simon Barrett coming off of Your Next and The Guest and was actually filmed in secret under the fake name of The Woods and wasn't revealed as a sequel until its first screening at Comic-Con. It feels more like a regular movie since there's more angles and shots since everyone is wearing these head cameras as well as using SLRs and they even have drones. And we're told the story of L.A. Kedward and Rustin Parr and the stick men start showing up and when they try to leave, of course, can't. Things start escalating with Peter getting taken and some sort of time distortion, sticks acting as voodoo dolls bending people in two, and Ashley is taken next. They find Parr's house and James thinks he hears Heather and Lisa spots something in the woods and has to crawl through a dirt tunnel and hey, uh, chalk this up as a thing that I never want to do. Ever. Things get really strange with this big light outside the cabin and for a brief second it seems like they might be hinting at aliens or something, but James says that they'll be safe if they don't look directly at the witch. He then uh, proceeds to look directly at her. Lisa uses the camera to try to get out, saying that she won't hurt her if she doesn't look at her, but then, um, oh, uh, well, uh, looks directly at her. The, the end. Besides the films, there's plenty of additional pieces of the puzzle out there. The first one came in 1999, just before the release of the first film, called Curse of the Blair Witch, which interviews friends and families of the missing trio and sets up the general lore of the film. Because, keep in mind, when the original came out, the intention was to create the belief that it was real, and it actually was a bunch of found tapes. This documentary was a supplement to that, and it aired on the Sci-Fi Channel. Also, in 1999, was a very similar mockumentary called Sticks and Stones, an exploration of the Blair Witch legend, which was included on the VHS release of the film, and mostly covers the same ground as Curse, but it, it does have some additional material. One year later, in 2000, when the movie went to cable stations, Showtime had a new mockumentary to go with it called The Massacre of the Burkittsville Seven, The Blair Witch Legacy, which focused mainly on the Rustin Parr murders. It reveals that the survivor of the slaying, named Kyle Brody, was actually implicated in the murders and eventually was committed and then died from a suicide in 1971. That same year, Sci-Fi had another mock doc called Shadow of the Blair Witch, this one timed up for release with Book of Shadows. It focused on the character of Jeff from that movie and gets really confusing because it states that the Blair Witch Project is reality and happened in the real world and that part two is just a filmed adaptation that was based on real life murders that happened in the wake of the first film's release th th that is not confusing at all there's also several books including a series of young adult novels both fleshing out past events as well as telling new stories a couple of comic book releases and three different video games each one depicting one of the events of the past the first game was about the par murders the second about coffin rock and the third about ellie kedward Future plans appear to be up in the air, as there's been discussions of a new film, potentially taking place in the 1700s, and also a TV series, but there hasn't been any news about either in several years.
So there you have it. It is three movies um, that, yeah, uh, their timeline kind of makes sense, but the continuity sort of doesn't just because of the way that it keeps jumping out of reality. Like, what is real and what isn't? It doesn't really make a lot of sense in terms of that. Um, but the timeline, the timeline does. It actually does work out with that. So I guess good on them for that. Uh, let me know what you think of these down below in the comments. Uh, tell me if you actually love the Blair Witch movies and feel as if uh, that, that they've definitely had a huge impact on horror, or if you think that they're just a bunch of overrated uh, crap. I myself love, love, love the first one. I still think it's a, a great flick, um, not so much the sequels. Um, but tell me if you do, and also please like this video, hit that subscribe button, share the video, all that good stuff, and check out my Patreon page with my patrons over here who help support this channel. And you can do that too at patreon.com slash movie timelines. I'd appreciate it. These guys do that and they are awesome. All of them are awesome and I, and I thank them. And I thank you guys for watching this video and hopefully you'll come back and do it again for another great one very soon. Thanks a lot guys. Bye bye.